All right, so I'm back in Visual Studio Code. Now I'm going to start building this function out. So the first thing we're going to do is, since we're going to be returning a future, we're going to call write future, and then we'll be returning a map of string to dynamic. All right, and we're going to call this fetch response. And this is going to take an image variable. And since this is an asynchronous function, we're going to write async. Now, all right, so now we need to import a package called mime. And what this package mime is going to allow us to do is check the data type of the image that we're sending into the HTTP request. Now, this is just going to allow us to send this request to this API. So we'll have to make sure to put it in. It's fine if you don't understand what it does, but pretty much it just um, gets the type from the variable. So we're going to call this uh, mime type data. And this is going to be called a look, lookup mime type. And we're going to input image path and the header bytes will be 0xff and 0xd8. And then we're going to split this by parentheses. All right. So, all right. Now let's just hot restart this app and we should get access to this function. All right. That should work. Now, the next thing we're going to do is do the post method. So this is going to be a final variable and we'll call this image upload request. And this is going to be equal to HTTP multi-part request. And this is going to be a post method. All right, so undefined name HTTP, let's import our HTTP dependency. So this is going to be package HTTP HTTP dot dart. All right. And let's just make sure we call this HTTP. All right. Beautiful. So this is going to be a multi-part request and it's going to be post and we're going to, we're going to parse our URL into our URI. And this is going to be this URL right here. But instead of the swagger.json, what we're going to put is model-predict. And then make sure you put your semicolon. And there you go. Now, this is going to be our HTTP request. And now, the next thing we're going to do is set a final file variable. So final file equals await HTTP.multipart file dot from path and then put image and then image dot path and the content type will be our mime type that we initialized above so media type and then mime type data zero and mime type data one all right so that's good for that. Now, now we're just going to add two more variables and this is going to be an image upload request. And set the fields variable ext extension equal to mime type data one. And then we'll add this so image upload request dot files dot add file all right now what we're going to do is we're going to set a try and catch method and that's so we're going to try to send a response so streamed response is equal to await image image upload request dot send 
And then final response equals await HTTP dot response dot from stream. And then we'll set our streamed response. <laughs> The next thing we're going to do is set another final variable. This is going to be a map of string dynamic, string dynamic, and this is going to be the response data. And we'll set this equal to json.decode response.body. All right. Now, we're getting an error that we don't have convert. Now let's get convert. And we have an error. All right, cool. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to parse that response. But in order to do that, we need to create a new function. So let's do that. We're gonna create a new function called void parse response. And this is going to take a variable of response and so we're going to set the string r equal to nothing. And then we'll have a var predictions equals response. And then we're going to grab our predictions key from the JSON file. And then we're going to iterate over this predictions, JSON, this prediction variable which was parsed in as json so var prediction in predictions and then we'll set the required keys so var caption equals prediction caption and then var probability equals prediction probability. All right, and then we'll set r equal to r plus and caption. All right, cool. And then the last thing we're gonna have to do is set the state of our result text, and we'll set that to r. All right, so this is our function to parse the response. We're parsing the function into a different text, and then we can use this text and print it out on the screen. And now what we can do is parse response. Sorry, I was just getting a phone call there. Um, but parse response, and we'll pass in our response data. I don't know why I keep writing response data without the S. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but now we can finally return our response data. Beautiful. Now we're getting an error saying we need to put our catch block. So let's do that. So catch E, and then we'll print E, and we'll return null. All right, beautiful. So. That should be it for our HTTP request. Um, we covered a lot in this video. I hope you guys understand what's been going on here. We um, we're checking the MIME type, and then we are posting our request to this URL that we found on our Red Hat OpenShift account. And we're just copy and pasting this, but we're moving swagger.json. And then we're sending a file to this request. And we're checking the MIME type once again. And then we're parsing a response, we're decoding, parsing the response into our result text. And then we're returning this response data. Um, now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate our entire HTTP requests into our app. And we're gonna set the loading variable. If it's true, we're gonna show this. And if it's false, show our response. And so that's what we're gonna do in the next video. I'll see you guys.